Perhaps, Madam Speaker, he would like to tell me whether he has received the support of the 50 MPs who defied his front bench over Maastricht. Uh, Madam Speaker, there's one very big difference. There's one very big difference. Yeah. Oh, no, there's one very big difference. I lead my party, he follows his. Isn't it extraordinary that the Prime Minister of our country can't even urge his party to support his own position? Yeah. Weak, weak, weak. Yeah. Yet five months after the bill left the House of Lords, it still hasn't come to the House of Commons. Can the Prime Minister tell us why he has allowed this appalling display of weakness? Mr Speaker, there is no commercial buyer for the Royal Mail. He must understand that. And can I also say, can I also say, can, can, can I also say, can I also Maybe say, last week this he was is telling us what a wonderful time it is to sell the tote, to sell the Dartford Crossing, <laughs> to tell the Channel Tunnel Rail Link, the student loan book. Everybody knows the reason he dropped this bill is that his backbenchers won't support it. Just for once, why doesn't he admit that? Isn't it the case that this trade union can sense weakness and they see weakness in this Prime Minister and this government? No, Mr. Strikes. And the way to stop this militancy is to show some leadership, some backbone, and some courage. Are we. Are we really going to spend another six months with a Prime Minister who cannot give a straight answer, who cannot pass his own legislation, who sits in his bunker not even able to decide what sort of biscuits he wants to eat? Doesn't he understand that stopping these strikes takes some courage and leadership, and isn't it clear he's got none of that to offer? Yeah.